What's up everyone? This is Erica with Hooking You Up and today we are going to do the revised version of the original Sunflower Boho Tank. I will leave the uh, the other video, the first video I did two years ago, I'll still leave that up because a lot of people did benefit from that tutorial. However, I had said in previous videos and also um, it was highly requested that I make a redo of this top. So, because that video quality was very poor, my editing skills were <clears throat> So, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. What you're going to need is some mustard color for the petals, some brown colors for the sunflower head, and then a base color of choice. I'm going to be doing black. I didn't think this through <laughs> when I, I know I already have a black, um, I didn't think it through to do a lighter color so it would show up more on the screen. However, I'm already far, so let's get to it. I'm using a 6.5 millimeter hook. Usually I use a 5.5 millimeter hook. Sometimes with larger sizes, I tend to use a bigger hook. It really, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter because it does. Um, however, I'm using Craft Smart yarn and I believe this is Karen one pound and 6.5 works great. It also allows me to finish the project when I'm doing bigger sizes much quicker and I can count on it being um, the square being bigger. So this is going to be a size large extra large and it consists of four rows one two three four and what's the measurements let's see about 10 inches let me see <laughs> excuse me yeah about 10 inches this one is also four rows and it measures eight or roughly seven and a half inches and that's because I used a 5.5 millimeter hook so the bigger your hook the the bigger your square is going to be the smaller your hook the smaller it's going to be all right, let's jump into it. So I already have seven here, including this square. Um, I'm just going to show you guys how I did the sunflower for those who aren't subscribed to my channel. Um, if you're subscribed to my channel, you should be a master at flowers. I mean, really. Um, however, if you're just clicking on this video, then this is the only tutorial you see. And therefore, you need to know how to make a sunflower. So we're going to start by making a slip knot. Insert your hook. And we're going to chain five. Slip in that first stitch by the tail. Chain two. And now we're going to make 12 double crochet in the center hole. So I'm yarning over, insert, pull the yarn up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, once you finish your 12th one, you're going to slip on the top of that first double crochet. Chain one. Now we're going to cut off a tail. Don't cut it too short because we'll need to weave it in. You can pull this first tail as tight as you can. The hole's not going to close, close completely, um, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and do the petals. Okay, we're going to start by making a slip knot. And we're going to insert our hook where we last left off where that tail is kind of a tight squeeze and we're going to pull the petal color through chain one 
And I like to tie my tail for extra security with my working yarn. Chain two. Now we're gonna yarn over, <clears throat> insert, pull up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Now we have two loops on the hook. Yarn over, insert, pull the working yarn up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And once you have three on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Chain one and you're going to chain one in between each petal. Yarn over, insert on the top of that second double crochet, pull the working yarn up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert, pull up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert, pull up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And once you have four on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all four. Chain one, yarn over. And now we're going to continue Once you have four loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all four. So for that first one, that chain two is going to count as that first. Um, so each one you will see consists of three double crochet. So that first chain will count and that's why we only end up with three loops when we're pulling through all three, just for the first one. For all other 12 and you'll have 12 total petals for all for the rest of the 11 petals excluding this first one you you should have four loops on your hook before pulling through all four then you'll chain one and you'll keep continuing until you have 12 total petals Once you finish that last one, you're going to slip on the top of that first petal. And there we have it. So to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Yay! So now we're going to bring our base color. You can choose any color you'd like. I'm going to cho choose black. I'm going to start by making a slip knot and we're going to insert it in the middle of, I, I always like to end where I left off. It keeps just all the loose ends on in the same area. Anyways, we're going to pull that working yarn through chain one Again, I like to knot that tail with the working yarn, chain two. Now we're going to make two double crochet in that same hole. And we always start our granny squares with the corner. So our first corner is going to consist of three double crochet, chain one, now we're going to make three double crochet in that same corner. One, two, three. So you should have a total of six double crochet with a chain one in the middle of them. Chain one. Now we're working our first side. We're going to make three double crochet. In between the next two petals chain one and you're going to chain one in between each set of three double crochet three double crochet chain one 
Now we're working our next corner. Chain one. Now we're making three double crochet in that same corner. So we just worked our first side. Two sets of three double crochet with a chain one in between the sets for the two corners. And then we have two sets of three double crochet for the center. Or the sides, excuse me. So you can see corner two double crochet corner two double crochet corner two double crochet only the first row in the round all of the sets will consist of three double crochet as we continue on and i'll show you guys in just a second but as we continue on from the second row into whatever row you end at because everyone's is going to consist of a uh, different size, which means the amount of rows you need to work in the round will depend on the coverage that you need. So I am making a size large, extra large. So I have four rows. So from row two to row four, the, all the sides are going to consist of two double crochet and only the corners will consist of three double crochet. So you can see, first row, three sets all in the round. Second row, two double crochet, two double crochet. Then the corner will consist of two sets of three double crochet. Then we continue two, two, two. Corner, two, 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 two. So everyone should look like this, okay? Let's continue. So we're making our second row. And the reason for the first row b consisting of all three double crochet is because it really makes the petals stand out. If I were to only have two, there'd be too much of a gap right here and that point at the top of the petal wouldn't be prominent. So now we're making our next, our third corner. I'll meet you guys at the end. Once you finish that last set, you're going to chain one and then you're going to slip stitch on the top of that first double crochet the second double crochet and also that chain one space and then we chain two and now we're working our second row so in between the two sets where that chain one space is we're going to do two double crochet two double crochet plus that chain two is our first set chain one now three double crochet. And we have worked our first corner. <laughs> Sorry, there's a fly on my phone. First quarter and our second row. So for all the sides, like I said, it's going to consist of just two double crochet. And I'll meet you guys once you've completed. I'll meet you guys at the end once I've completed my four rows. And I'll show you in the next slide how to make your size. So your top is going to look like this, right? So these two will be your cups. And this will be like where your cleavage is, right? So I like to just. kind of hold like that as I work each row and I just measure like this after each row so I can get to my desired um, coverage 
okay? But you just wanna make sure that however many, um, however many rows you use, you always wanna start with the first two cups, the cups basically. So whatever, however many rows you use for the two cups, you wanna mimic for all eight squares. I will show you guys at the very end when we're connected, once we've connected all the squares, I'll show you guys how to add an extra row um, if you uh, if you want some more coverage up here, okay? So I did do it for this one um, before I did the straps. So it won't be too low down the middle. Let's get back to the tutorial. All right, you guys, so you're going to continue how we just did this first square. You're going to do the same method for a total of eight, eight squares. And I will meet you guys once we need to start connecting them. So I'm going to make sure all the insides, the inside is going to be where all the loose ends are. You wanna make sure all the inside sides are facing each other and are facing on the inside just like that we're just going to set up our top as if it were being done You guys can all see that. So this is where we bring in our tapestry needle. Okay. And you can either weave in the ends at the end. Usually before I put them all together, I just knot them up and get them ready to just be scissored off. And then I scissor them. Um, I cut them all off once I attach all the sides. So this is an important part. You wanna make sure that you can either start with, usually I do three squares at a time. So again, I make sure they're all facing the right way. And this is going to be the front flap. So just like how I have it here, like a V. Okay, and I'm gonna hook my, I'm going to hook my loose end into my tapestry needle, tie it for security, and now I'm going to, since I'm technically starting where that chain one is, this is where we last left off um, last, we're going to find the chain one square on the other side because you want to make sure it's all lined up nice and even. Each group is lined up with the other side group. So we're going to insert just the top. Pull through. Okay. Now we have three double crochet to do left. Hope you guys can see that. It's a little dark because I'm doing this later on in the day. Anyways, now we're going to find, we're just going to insert on the top of each stitch we're going to pull through and usually I have this laying flat but since I'm trying to make sure I get it all in the in the screen I'm bringing it up closer now we're going to find our second 
Notice how we're just pulling through the two top loops on each side. And then our last corner. Now we're same with the chain one spaces. So all the chain one spaces should be stitched all the top of the double crochets should be lined up nice and easy. All right, you're always going to end weaving in the chain one spaces. So once I've connected, I like to hold the side that I started from, and then I just slightly pull, and that keeps it from gapping when it's being pulled. So as you can see, it's a little gappy down the middle. So I'm going to keep pulling, there we go. And it just keeps it nice and flat. Now I'm going to bring in my other side. Notice how we're making a V. So you'll have two V's, one. Two. So you'll have one V, two V. This will be the back, this will be the front. Doesn't matter which one's front or back because they're all the same size. So you're going to do the same thing with this side. Once you do along this side, you'll have your first top and then you can just mimic these three squares. And I'll meet you guys there. All right, so now we have our front and our back. So now, like I said earlier, we're gonna make sure all of our loose ends are on the inside. And now we're going to do the sides. So in order to do the sides, it needs to connect along this line and also along this flap. So how we do that is just fold from corner to corner and line it up like that. Okay, starting from the bottom, we're gonna find that chain one space. And then we're going to find the top of that double crochet on both sides. Going through the chain one spaces, make sure it's all lined up even as you work your way down. And if you don't have a string on a side that you need, you can always just cut attach it wherever you need. It would likely be a chain one space. You would just attach it and then start weaving it in like usual. Okay, so like I said earlier, we're always going to end, we're always going to start, and we're always going to end in a chain one space. Alright, now we're going to flip our work, and now we are going to do this, this side. Okay, once you do this side, you're going to mimic that same, that same direction on this side, okay? And once you have all the pieces together, I'll meet you guys for the rest. 
right, now that we have all of our pieces, it should look like this. Now we're going to do the border. So typically, I don't just stop here. There's two ways on doing the border before we do the strap. So the first way is if you like how much coverage you have in the squares that you've made, you will just make a slip knot. And usually I start at the end of one of the cups. So you're going to insert your hook in the middle of one of the double, or on the top of one of the double crochets. Chain one and tie that tail for extra security. Chain two, or chain one, sorry. Now we're going to half double crochet in each double crochet as well as under the chain one spaces, make, making sure to pull tight as you go. And by doing this, what we are doing is making sure that all these squares are nice and straight. And right now they look pretty straight, but just trust me, having that last half double crochet border really makes it nice and, and look good. So that's the first way, and you will do that across, down the middle, across the other side, uh, um, where the armpits are, back up the, the back side, down the back side of the middle, up, down, until you end up where you started. Then you'll just do a slip stitch, and then fasten off and weave in the ends. Now, the way I've been doing lately um, for an extra row of coverage and just a stronger fit on top, again, I will have, I will, I'll make a slip knot and then I'll insert through one of the holes where the chain one spaces are. Bring the working yarn through, tie a knot for extra security, chain two, and make two double crochet. Chain one, skip that set where that next chain one space is. We're going to make two double crochet. Chain one, and repeat this. all the way up, down the middle, up the other side, the armpit area, up, 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 until you reach back where you started, and then you'll make a slip on the top of that second double crochet. So either way you wanna do it, half double crochet border, or the another set, another row of um, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet set in the round. Whatever you want to do, you choose what you guys would like, and then I'll meet you at the straps. I should also mention whether you, whether you chose to do half double crochet border or um, the two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet border. It'll be the same for whichever you choose. For coming up to the top, you'll insert, do two double crochet, chain one, two in that same hole, and work your way down the middle. When you get to the middle, you're going to run into this. You're going to see a corner here, a corner here, a corner here. So once you work that last corner, you're just going to chain two. We're going to skip this middle. You're just going to chain two and then continue on in this space. 
it'll create a hole right here. So as you can see in this one, actually I did one double crochet in that corner and then I changed one and did one double crochet in that corner and it creates a little hole and then just continuing on with the two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, okay? If you did a half double crochet, you would half double crochet in that first hole, chain one, half double crochet in that corner hole, and continue. All right, I hope that makes sense, you guys. Um, the border can be a little tricky when explaining. And then I should also mention, you guys, as you work the points, this is technically a corner since it's sideways, but for the points where the straps will be, you want to make sure whether you're doing half double crochet or you're doing the two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet sets, you will, it'll be the same for either or, but you want to make sure for where the straps are going to be up here that you're working you're working it as a corner okay so this should all lined up it's okay if this is just a set of two even though all the corners are a set of three um, if you have OCD you can do three double crochet chain one three double crochet it's really not going to make a significant difference however I just like to keep the border all the same so that's why I did two chain one two okay as you work your way down once we get to the middle and it'll be on It'll be the same reference for the back side as well. But once you work that last corner, you're only going to do one double crochet. It'll bunch up too much if there's two double crochet down here towards where your clavicle is. Clavicle, sternum, where your sternum is. So you're just going to chain one. Even if you're doing half double crochet, you're going to chain one. I'm sorry, you're gonna do one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet, and then continue working your way up. Once you get to an armpit, it's going to be the same thing. One double crochet in that corner space, chain one, and then on the other side, in the middle of that corner, one double crochet, chain one and then continue, or if you're doing half double crochet, you're going to do one half double crochet, chain one, one half double crochet, all right? So for the straps, we're going to bring out our yarn, make a slip knot, And we're gonna pull up it's kind of hard to see and we're going to start on the right side in that double crochet on the right of the chain one we're going to bring our working yarn through chain one tie the tail for extra security and I'm going to make a chain of 28 In order to figure out how many stitches you need for your strap, what I usually do is I do at least 20 because for all sizes, 20 is at least the minimum amount of stitches you would have for your strap. So I'll start with 20. You can always stitch marker the other side and then you can put it on and see how the whole top hangs with the strap amount or the strap size that you have and you can adjust it as you go. Typically for all my sizes, I'm usually making a strap between 26 and 32. So it kind of varies based on size. However, I did 28 right here for this large, extra large size. So, of course, you want to mirror and mimic the other side. So, because we started on the right side facing, 
we're going to be starting on the left side. So you're going to find that double crochet on the left side of the chain one, insert your hook through both loops, and you're going to bring the strap through. Now this one's kind of tricky. Let me, okay. So I'll show you again. Insert my hook. I'm going to bring that last chain or that last stitch through, skipping that chain one space right there. You're going to tightly insert your hook on the right, on the double crochet on the right side. Yarn over, slip through both. Now keeping your yarn nice and tight, you're going to slip in each stitch working your way back down. And you're pulling tight as you go because you want a nice even strap. Okay. And you'll do the same method on this side. However, you'll flip your work before you do it. Because when you're building your chain, it should be worked on the right side. And then when you're slip, slipping the stitches, it should be worked on the inside. So once you get down to that last stitch, you're going to skip that last stitch. And you're going to find the left, the double crochet on the left side of the chain one. You're going to tightly slip. Okay. Then you can weave in your ends. So now I have two even two even stitches. All right. Now we're going to go to the fringe. Now we can do the fringe. So the standard, approximately the standard size that I usually do is 10 inches. 10 inches. So you can make your fringe as long or short as you would like in order to get nine inches what I usually do is fold the length in half so if I need ten inches then it just means you'll need to double it. So this is 20 inches. So the fringe is the most annoying part, but once you're done, the top is so satisfying. So I sit here and just make a million fringe pieces. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to attach it. Oops. So with the needle inserting through the back side in each stitch, you're going to make sure it's even. You're going to pull it through those loops, yarn over, and pull it tight. You're going to do it in every stitch along the bottom. 